Thank you for joining. Today we're talking about some of the admin nightmares in Microsoft 365 and uh, some ways to get to a better place around balancing empowerment, effectiveness, and security. The webinar is optimized to be heard through your computer speakers, but there are other audio options as well, such as calling in by phone under the audio tab on the right-hand side of your screen. <coughs> In addition, um, please feel free to submit questions throughout the event as we go through. We will hold them to the end and then take some questions for our, uh, our visitor here. Um, you can also, if you're having any technical difficulties, either submit the questions or via the chat, um, we would be happy to assist you. And with that, I would love to get us rolling. I'm Sadie Peterson Hatton. I am the uh, head of product marketing here at CoreView. And joining me today um, is Dean Glau, our, um, who's really a partner, but also has implemented CoreView um, for us at a particular customer that we'll be talking about today. And um, we'll be sharing some of his experiences. So welcome, Dean. Thanks for hopping on today. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. I'm glad um, we can share a bit of how to make your life easier, right? So and that's, no, we, that's what... That's what we're all about. <laughs> yep, absolutely. No, it's funny. We had um, a, a prep call for this yesterday, and we had such a great conversation. And I'm, I'm so strongly uh, a believer that this will actually change the way that IT teams do their day-to-day -day work. So super excited to share today. Um, you know, as we talk, and I'll try and be quick here, as I know people want to get to hearing from you, Dean, about actual implementation of the customer site. But, you know, if we think about how IT systems evolved, right? You started out with kind of mainframes and everything was super, super centralized. And then over time, you kind of had this successive uh, network of, of PCs coming on board and then everything got yeah. further and further apart, right? More disparate. And now with cloud computing, you've kind of got everything a little bit everywhere. <laughs> um, and that's actually really great in the sense of user access to technology and um, the speed and availability of technology, et cetera. But, but as you've seen all that evolve, you haven't always seen IT teams and the workload associated with supporting those technologies change in the same way, right? And so, although you would like to think that as technology itself went from sort of a very centralized model to an increasingly decentralized model, the IT teams did as well. And in some cases, they, they have. In a lot of IT teams, they still have to choose kind of one or the other, right? Do they either have yep. great security, great control, and it's all centralized, or do they decentralize it and sort of give up the, the higher levels of security and control and compliance that they would love to achieve because everybody's kind of off here doing whatever they want, right? And so the way that the teams and the workflow, workload have evolved just haven't really kept up with the way that you kind of need to administer modern IT, uh, modern IT systems, right? And so what we see a lot, in fact, oddly enough, we were on with one of the Microsoft product managers the other day, and he was even talking about this, is that you kind of have to choose. You have to choose one or the other, right? Security or um, security and control or empowerment and decentralization. And a lot of that is because the tools don't exist to do something in between, maybe the best of both worlds type of approach, right? Um, and so obviously this is something that here at CoreView we do a ton of work in, but we know that what's stopping you is that native Microsoft 365 tools are not really set up to support kind of an in-between or best of both worlds type of model. Um, and so I wanted to lay that groundwork before we really kind of dig in, Dean, on what you've seen. Um, so again, to just elaborate a little bit more, what we see typically is either you've got, let's give everybody the privileges, let's give everybody the ability to do what they need to do and move faster. And so that works, right? Things get done quickly, but when things get done quickly and you have too many privileges, people are maybe changing configurations. Right. Want them to change. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? It's the typical, like, if we let, you know, Susie and HR reset all the HR team's passwords, what else is she going to break? What else does she have access to? Um, and, you know, does that make us non-compliant with different regulatory requirements? Um, and also, you know, if, if Susie and HR has access to a whole bunch of things, uh, is there a kind of a bigger blast radius if there is a problem, right? If somebody hacks into our account, for example, and you've got a yeah. ton of admins, et cetera. And so then on the flip side, you, you have the too few privileges, the like keep everything just locked down and tight and by the way, typically your users and your uh, 
what we call delegated admins, but your sort of local IT people are really unhappy with this model, right? Because they can't do what they need to do. They have to escalate everything to central IT. Um, and then sometimes they find their ways to kind of go around the systems or people are sharing passwords or other really not so desirable outcomes. Um, but on the upside, you know, better control, better security, better compliance, but lots of complaints and headaches. And by the way, then central IT is on the hook for absolutely everything. So good luck taking a vacation and actually logging off of your email <laughs> right, on the central IT team. Um, at CoreView, we like to think that there is in fact, sort of a, what we call perfect privileges or more broadly delegated administration, a way to delegate and yet streamline and kind of wrap things in a way that lets people do what they need to do but in a very controlled predictable automated way people can move faster and yet maintain that security and so that's really what we're here to talk about today is this delegated administration model that balances both beyond what you could do in the native environment so dean I think, um <laughs> I, think, I think we should change this whole subject to how can you go on leave without worrying <laughs> that's I exactly love that what, approach to it. What yeah. Corview actually does, if we think about it, like what you said. I totally agree. It really is. I mean, it, it. Yes, it's better for the organization. Yes, it's better for end users and different teams and departments that are happier and more able to get things done. But it really is also a work-life balance question, right? And also, more so than that, and I know you're going to talk about this a little bit, Dean, but it's also about contentment at work. It's about being able to maybe do something a little more strategic than processing a ton of support requests as an IT professional, right? That, that might not be the thing you went to college dreaming about um, <laughs> for a lot of us. So um, let's talk about a little bit about what that really looks like. Dean, I think you were implementing CoreView for a really quite large pharmaceutical company that was multinational and had some complexity in their environment. Um, actually had, did you say 20,000 employees or so? Yep just over 20. And they were kind of handling Thousand. some of the problems in <laughs> 20,000. Yeah. Uh, so give <laughs> us a little bit of a background of what they were struggling with. So I think if we, I'm going to take one step step back on the, on the previous slide where you said, okay, you've got too much power, you've got too little power. At the end of the day, many companies, they all see, okay, we have to move to the cloud, especially with the whole um, COVID scenario we had um, now two years ago and everything where, where companies didn't want to move to the cloud and everybody was scared, ah, oh, but should we move now? That they found out they had to. Now, when you move to the cloud, obviously you choose whichever cloud environment you want to go to and then you're sitting with the privileges. Now, on your local environments and everything, there was a way that you could some give some kind of limit to certain privileges. When it comes to the cloud, especially with Microsoft, um, Microsoft believe in least um, privilege. That's how you have to start everything off. The problem is the design of the of the whole Azure and Microsoft 365 environment doesn't give that full on limited permissions to do certain things. Now we look at if you have too little permissions and you have too much permissions, right? If you have too much, like you mentioned, Sadie, you're going to have um, some of the staff having access to something that they might break if they don't have the knowledge of how to implement it and how it will affect other parts of the environment. Then if you sit with a scenario of they have too little privileges, now you have, I'm going to take an example of your um, Deside support team. Um, while everything was on-prem, they might have had their AD administrative um, tool sets they could install on their laptops or whatever and limited to certain OUs and all those kinds of things and they could only perform certain actions. They can only do reset of passwords or only this or only that. Now you're sitting with a scenario that all these little tasks that they used to do needs to go up to the senior engineers. Now in a in any corporate environment and that's why we um, why we suggest to most of our clients to use CoreView is you want your senior engineers to actually focus on building the business, building your IT infrastructure, getting everything to a scenario and managing it. Now, it sounds silly, yeah, password resets five minutes, but a lot of the tasks that the senior guys are busy with, you can't just leave it quickly, go do something else. Okay, let me reset a password and come back. So that causes 
um, from, a, from a top level that um, your senior engineers cannot give full focus on building the environment, making everything better, easier for the business to run um, smoother. And you've got your local um, IT team struggling to get stuff done for users. And I've got that whole thing. Um, I said it at a previous client before and I almost got in trouble, but he understood. Um, there was a problem with a PA of the CFO. And I phoned the help desk. I said, I don't care if it's the PA or if it's a CFO or whoever, sort their problem out because eventually it steps up, steps up. Now you've got the the desktop support engineer. He cannot do a basic task for the PA anymore because everything's now cloud. They don't want to give him too much permissions, but that affects the CFO's booking in his calendars. She needs to manage it. And now what happens? You know, so I always say companies need to give their staff the right tools to perform their um, work in a very um, well organized and efficient way. And I think that is exactly what CoreView brings to the party when it comes to um, your Microsoft Cloud environment. I love that actually positioning, Dean, because I think we talk a lot with customers about, okay, well, if you automated this workflow or this workflow, how much time would that save you? But to your point, it's often there's a there's a downstream implication of that as well yep. in terms of overall organizational productivity that may actually be much more than the five minutes or eight minutes or whatever it was from an IT perspective. Yeah. I love that perspective. And now I want to build that into some future webinars we're doing too. Um, <laughs> so how does that look in terms of day-to-day -day administration? Like you've talked about kind of theories about it, but what does that what does that really mean in terms of what of how things are split up and what people are doing? So the nice thing that CoreView does is if you have a look at the permission model of Microsoft, you've got these, he has a group, the role-based access control, like they call it. So this role can do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E. You only want them to do A and D as an example. In CoreView, you can actually build up those permission models to only give, say you've got a person that needs to maybe share um, mailbox permissions, do mailbox permissions and reset passwords. And that's all they have to do. Trying to give them only that access in Microsoft's um, native tool sets is very difficult. The nice thing, CoreView, I've never seen any tool set actually break it down so much as CoreView does, where you can go reset password, um, unlock account, and each of those you can give separate rights to. Um, you can do that for the way that um, you create users or any attribute that you want to edit for users, mailbox, there's so many functions of mailboxes you can do in Exchange, and you can break each of these down separately to give people certain permissions to do that. Now, what we found at, at our clients is that we actually save the business time, and we save them admin cost on a, on a let's call it their business model and where they want to grow it and everything, because now the senior team actually contacts us say, listen, we're getting a bunch of these kinds of requests. Please, isn't there something we can do in Corvi? And go, yes, just ask us what you want them to do and who's allowed to do what, so we can do that. And the nice thing is you can even split that permission model in Corview. You can create certain permissions to, let's say, for your service desk, for your desktop support, for your um, email administrators, for your team's administrators, because remember, the nice thing about CoreView, it's not only limited to what you can do on a user. It's also linked to Teams. It's linked to SharePoint. It's linked to, to more than just your normal um, user administration. And I think from a day-to-day -day, um, administration perspective, if you have the guys on the ground by the people that actually need certain things to be done, that can do this, obviously you wanna make sure you give the correct permissions to somebody that have the skills, that's gonna, that's gonna make their life easier. Yeah, I think there's a lot of talk right now about you know, who is best suited to do a particular task. It's often someone who is, especially, I mean, IT can't be expected to be experts in every possible department's needs and workflows and right. And so yep. the closer that you can get some of these tasks to 
that department or that business unit or whatever it may be, the more likely it is that they're, you know, able to be really that consulting and that kind of more valuable role of partnering with the the business and making sure that they have what they need. But again, the native tools don't necessarily always enable that approach. I do want to mention yeah. too, I think you mentioned really refined permissions. One of the things that it's going to sound silly, but I get excited about with Coreview is not only the ability, yes, incredibly granular permissions, but also the ability to say, okay, you've got, you know, this one permission only across whatever it may be, only across every marketing department globally across, yeah. you know, several tenants, for example, but not anybody else, not anybody in, you know, finance or HR or whatever. Um, and so it becomes this really powerful tool for teams that in some cases are managing a ton of different tenants, or maybe they're centralizing into one tenant, or there's a transition plan. I mean, there's so many different applications of how that looks and how that plays out in day-to-day -day administration that just makes so much sense but again the technology tools aren't almost in, all, always in place yeah to support and that and that's what i love about the virtual tenanting um that coreview brings in right and you mentioned about multiple tenants um the nice thing is with a virtual tenants in microsoft it's difficult to split up who can access and um, which users now i've got a scenario where the administrators in brazil the desktop support team in brazil can only see their users that are in Brazil. They can only perform certain tasks on their users only. And as well as teams, you can um, set it up to say only with these naming conventions or with this or with that. They can only use certain um, telephone numbers for their um, teams calling. Um, you know, and I've got that set up for Brazil. I've got it set up for um, for the Netherlands, for Germany, for all the different locations. We've set it up like that, and that makes it so much easier, especially with compliance at this point. Um, I've seen globally that there's been so many companies actually sued um, for not for the breach of the compliance acts and everything. And I think that's where that's where Coreview helps a ton. And is that so? This particular client we were talking about, the pharmaceutical client. Yeah. Um, is that mostly how they had things set up was by region or was it different business units? What was kind of their, their use case for virtual tenants? So what we've done for them is broke it up into OUs. Um, so the nice thing that Coreview does is you don't only have to go by department by this. You can even use an AD attribute that you want and you can import those custom attributes as well into into core view and say this attribute if it says xyz create a virtual tenant for that and even for the licensing models right sorry i know i'm t going a bit off of course here now um with just the permissions but it's got the granularity of splitting up i mean if we have a look at permissions i know in we've got some other clients that they struggle with their licenses because maybe um there's an africa country that's keep on taking licenses in office 365 for them and with coreview you can actually limit it so that they can only use x amount of licenses to assign to their users which are in these ous so whenever they reach that limit sorry you can't use more of the other business units licenses and that's one of the things we also um found that um our biggest client um the pharmaceutical client is that this helped to prevent the company spending unnecessary money and other business units actually using um, money from different organizer or different locations that they actually purchase that licenses because you can't really well you can just go remove the licenses from some users but that's going to cause other problems right so so yeah sorry i veered a bit off to the licensing side but i get all excited about four view because I know no. how easy it makes life. <laughs> no, it, it's a really great point, right? Is that we're not just managing users, we're managing, I'll call it inventory in the sense of maybe it's teams phone numbers, maybe it's license pools, but but a way to kind of allocate and and allocate, 
allocate the costs accordingly, particularly where you have some of these more complex business models. And there is, you know, a lot of dispute or maybe a, a really complicated process or maybe no process at all for allocating some of those costs because it becomes really challenging to reduce costs if you can't even see what department are kind of the, the biggest users or the ones that are causing a lot of waste, et cetera, right? And again, it's also hard. Yep for central IT to come in and try and help people maybe reduce their license expenditure or whatever when they're not the experts in what's going on in that business unit, et cetera, right? Yeah. And so the more you can kind of allocate those out and assign it, it shifts that responsibility to the people best suited to, to perform the work. Um, I think it's important to call out that we talk about the kind of physical ability in the technology to give people certain ability capabilities, but also that knowledge. Right, so you need two things. Yep. If I'm going to trust you to do a task, Dean, if I say, okay, I need you to even do something basic, like go wash the dishes, <laughs> to use a home analogy, um, I need to believe that you know how to use the dishwasher, and I need to believe that you, you know, know which dishes need to be washed, whatever that looks like, right? And so, not only does Corvio give you the ability to kind of provide the technology, but also to kind of create some of those workflows and some of those standardizations where maybe you hand people the ability to execute this workflow to solve this problem or to reset this or whatever and kind of build guidelines or or guardrails, I guess, around it. Yeah, there's two there's two parts in core view that I actually like that makes it easier, right? So let's let's go on onboarding um, users into your business. So you've got a HR system that says, hey, this is the user, please give them this permissions or or create this user for me. Now, when you create the user, it's not just anymore a scenario of just go click, click, new user, put in everything in AD, because you want to also limit those access. Now you've got a scenario with the, with the new way of working and remote working all day. You need to create a user. You need to give them access to certain Microsoft groups. You need to give them, um, you need to allocate a number to them. You need to add them to a team and all that. But you've got, yeah, you've got a service a help desk agent sitting here creating these or HR system do it by itself because CoreView has got a REST API that the HR system can kick off a workflow on. So you've got all these single tasks that you need to do usually to go add the user to all these things, but the you don't want the help desk support agent to have access to it. So what do we do? We create a workflow where you've got inputs that you can literally just put in the name, surname, and you can choose, you can even make it that you can choose from a list of departments or what type of user it is. And let's say we go finance user. So we've got the name, surname, and finance user, and you go next. Then Core View's got on the back end, whoever built has got the permission to build the workflows for this new user creation. You will create the user with a naming convention that you decide it needs to be. It will um it will add it to all the groups that the finance um, department that you chose because you've got certain rules if it's finance added to x y and z groups and to these distribution groups and all that so the workflows make life so much easier that you can instead of sending a ticket to three different departments just to create a user you can have the service desk do it or like i said the hr system can do it by itself by just clicking a button sending it over the rest api to kick off a workflow um, so that's that's one of the cool things. And the other part you mentioned is where um, sometimes you, you want to give them the ability to do something, but you don't know if they've got the skills. One of my favorite things in Core View is the custom actions. So with the custom actions and the permission model, I've built about, about 80 something custom actions that um, was specific to business units that they wanted. So they wanted to do, I'm trying to think, I can't remember which one it was that's not already in core view, but um, silly thing, hide from address list. Instead of giving somebody access to view the um, mailbox settings, going to untick that hide from address list and then go apply, I set up a PowerShell script where it can pull in the UPN of the user and it will run all the commands to disable the um, the users like to be seen in the address list. So hide from address list, it makes it true. All they have to do is just go click on hide from address list. It brings up the users they are allowed to manage 
they click the user, they go next, and everything happens by itself. No need to worry about users going in PowerShell, doing certain things if they don't have access to this or that. And I think that's the awesomeness of Core View, limiting them from doing something, but still giving everybody the right tools to do their job faster. Everything needs to be fast these days anyway. So. <laughs> We're becoming less and less patient, aren't we? Um, yep. Yeah, you know, actually, it's it's. I was on a demo this morning, and the uh, the CSM team was talking about uh, kind of this workflow library that they're working to build out, which is, you know, learning from our clients all the cool things that they're doing, and then dumping it into a library where customers can say, oh, oh, wait, that's a great idea for a workflow that I hadn't thought about automating, and let me, you know, utilize that version in my own environment, um, which is something we're really excited about of of helping everybody sort of up level the way that they're doing a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I think we've wandered off a little bit from my official questions, which of course was the intention. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I, I love it actually. Um, my my question is what what was what's your biggest recommendation if someone's thinking, gee, moving to sort of this delegated administration in between, you know, lockdown and fully open model, uh, tips for them? What's your recommendation? You know what, I would go put a tool set in place that allows your people to do their work and still give them the limitations to not break anything. Um, when it comes to what I'll, I like building people, um, when somebody wants to learn something, tell them, right, go do some studying around it, check what you can do, and then go write your Microsoft exams and everything. And then I can give you a little bit more um, access to do certain things. Now, especially in that environment, I think Corvi is a pretty cool um, tool to do it, to build your company. Um, when you have a certain team that wants to build, you've got a desktop support team, the one guy wants to go into um, Exchange Online, that's his passion, he wants to go into there. Corvi gives you the ability to give a little bit more access to only the Exchange portion to certain um, to certain users. And you can manage these permissions per user even, instead of per group. So that's what's quite nice. And I will recommend taking this model of, you don't want that model of too much or too little, because too much is gonna, things are gonna break, too little, people won't be able to do their job and your business is gonna suffer under it. So my recommendation is get a, get a tool set that can do everything for you and I think Corvi is one of my favorite that I've been working with so far. Well, also, I think I tend to think it's a totally agree in terms of the mindset or in, in terms of the tool set, but I also think it's a mindset shift a little bit, right? That there is so much, we're so used to this idea that I have to choose one or the other, or I can't give people the power to do things themselves. Yep. And if you start looking at it in a new way, if you start looking at every you know support request that gets escalated or whatever it is, and you go, wait, I've seen four of those this week. How could I build a process to try and change that or get that off my plate or make it faster, yeah. easier, whatever? I think it, it leads you down a path of just looking at everything in your world differently. And of course, when that leads you to core view, we love that as well, but um, across a whole bunch of fronts, right? Just changing the way that you think about kind of the IT admin burden. Um, yeah. All right. And then I think one that I feel I, I see people struggling uh, with a lot is building consensus, right? Because your your point about it even impacts end users, but also there's there are often so many different teams that are handling different services or that are involved. And, you know, maybe your security team has a, an interest in your governance team, let alone your, yeah. you know, unified commu communications team, if we're talking about team's voice, could be a whole lot of things. How did you kind of go about getting everyone to come to the table and realize the value of building that, that consensus? The most difficult thing of getting, the most difficult people to convince is business, right? Now I'm not talking technical, I'm talking about the financial guys. Um, because what happens as soon as you go, oh, I found this cool tool set that can make our life easier. The first question is how much does it cost? Okay, now I've worked in a bunch of industries with a bunch of different tool sets that do a bunch of different things. And when you go to business with this model of what Corview can give you, you need to let them know it's not only a technical tool set. 
it is a money saving tool set as well. Um, and it sounds weird if I say that, but I've implemented Core View not only for the technical um, part, but also for the reporting part. There's a lot of tool sets that can do that administration of accounts, administration of this, administration of that. There's not a lot of tool sets that can give you reports on your users, licenses, on your um, teams, on your SharePoint, on OneDrive, on, and the list goes on. And literally on each of those, you've got like 10 default reports already, and you can customize them. And you can have a, you can have them actually sent out to management every week. Good example is disabled accounts with licenses. Now you pay for those licenses if they're being used. So one of my favorite reports is whenever I onboard a, a business unit that we migrate to the cloud and we say, right, um, this is what you're going to use to manage it. The first thing I show them is how to set up reports that can be automated and sent to them. Um, so weekly, each business unit gets an email to say, hey, listen, these are all your disabled accounts with licenses. The next report is, these are users that are using, have too high SKUs. You can maybe drop the SKUs because they're not using all the services that you have in that SKU. Now, obviously, you need to think about that before you just do that because, like we said, the compliance, um, certain license SKUs in Microsoft is there for a reason because you want those that retention on the data. So don't just go do it. You still need somebody to think how it works, but at least you see how much money you can save on that. And when I bring that to the business side, when I tell business, listen, instead of making your life easier and not having everybody wasting time or waiting or people not being able to do their work, you can also benefit from this in seeing how much money your business spends. And the nice thing is in Core View, you can even put in the cost. You can put in, it sounds silly if I go HR cost, the office cost, but the nice thing is you've got a section where you can say, this is how much a license cost me um, per user. And it doesn't pull it from Microsoft. You can put in your value because you've got different CSPs that give different pricing. You've got your EA agreements. You've got all those that have different pricing. So you can say for each license of this, this is how much it cost me. How much does an active user cost me? And you can work out um, the space that it takes in the office, the electricity, or whatever you want, you can put it in. That gives a, a department actually a view of how much their users cost them. It's things like that that, that um, business don't always think about. And then lastly, I usually go, what tool sets do you use at this moment? to manage your environment, your Office 365 environment. And they will go, oh, we've got this, this, this. I'm like, okay, let's see, what does each one of that do? Now it does this, this, I'm like, okay. So all of those tool sets, and obviously there are still things that CoreView is building. And I see every month with the updates, they put extra features in. So not there's not one tool set that can do everything in life, unfortunately, not at this point. I'm hoping CoreView gets there, but, but um, if you can have tool sets that you spend 800,000 on a year, let's go $80,000 a year that you spend on managing your, your user accounts, just creating them and resetting passwords and those kinds of things. If, if you think of a company with 20,000 plus people, it's not a bad amount of money that you're spending, but throw that money away because Goreview can do it as well. Okay, what do we have to manage the exchange side um, online? What do we have to do reporting? If you take all those costs together, um, compare that to what the pricing might be on a certain package in CoreView. Who knows? Maybe it can save you money. And I've seen for business, the reporting side was what helped business the most because they can actually use that to plan. And you can even use it to do KPIs for your um, for your technical team. It sounds silly, but I've helped customers set it up that way to see, hey, why don't you um, like clean your environment, keep it tidy, keep it neat, and Coreview has the functionality to do that. So to build consensus, it's easy. From technical side, you say, listen, do you want to have the permissions to do this? Oh, yes, please, because we're struggling. We always have to send it to technical. Go, technical, do you want me to be able to limit the, 
the permissions only to this. Please, because this guy's always bugging me to do that. And then you've got business. Listen, do you want to make sure that your team is um, doing the work they have to do and some of it's even automated so they can spend more time on something else? Plus, you can see what's going on in your IT environment. Yes, please. So it's... When it comes to building a consensus, you need to just understand how technology can help business. And if you if you ever th if you wonder how this can help your business, then give the guys a call, you a call, give me a call. I can also maybe um, help explain to you how it can help you. But yeah, it's not difficult building the consensus if you know exactly how it can save you money. You know, I think that's the key, right? Is our customers now are telling us, and I will, uh, well, I'm jumping ahead to next month's webinar actually, but uh, we had a customer that I was on the phone with recently who said, well, it's really simple. I, I told them I would give up a full time. He had an open headcount on his team and he said, I'll give up that headcount to get Corbio. And that was nine years ago and he hasn't uh, changed his mind. <laughs> so apparently it was a positive, uh, a positive path. So, um, yeah. but also just that, underestimating i think the impact of every little thing that you could offload and all of a sudden it adds up and we have customers who absolutely tell us that 30 40 50 percent of their day-to-day -day workload ends up being automated or delegated and and how much of an impact that makes on their on their day um which actually is a great lead into why is this so important for it teams and we've touched on this a little bit but why is it so important to kind of do it differently in this way in my what it's now 18 years in IT, most people, I don't know, there's a saying that says, everybody leaves because of bosses. In the IT industry, people leave if they don't have the right tool set to do their job, okay? Um, this is why for me, this is important for an IT team. Um, it makes life easier, it makes it simpler, it automates a lot of parts. Um, like we spoke about the um, disabled accounts with licenses. You can, that report that you run every week, you can link a workflow to it to say, okay, send me this report every week so that at least I know which accounts it is. And you can even, I know like some, I'm going to use an example. Sorry, I know we're a bit over, but I like, I, I'm a quiet guy. Um, so shared mailboxes. Sometimes you want to give a shared mailbox a license for archiving purposes, right? And a shared mailbox is disabled. So in this report that you that you send out weekly that says, yes, all your disabled accounts with licenses, you can exclude if the recipient type detail is shared mailbox as an example. So it will only give that users. That list, you can then say, connect a workflow to it. When Then you create a workflow that says, remove all licenses from these accounts. Then you just get an email every week that says, hey, Listen, these were the accounts that were disabled with licenses. We have removed the licenses. You know what happens if they shouldn't be removed? You can just go add the license back. Go into that report, just edit it to exclude that account, and everything's fine. So that automation also helps your IT teams. And I just named one example. There's so many I can go on for days. But that kind of functionality that CoreView brings can save the IT team so much time and effort. If they can spend that time doing something else, making people happy with giving them new technologies, going to research stuff, uh, building their skills so that they can have more permissions. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's that's why I think um, CoreView is very important for IT teams and having, or let's call it having the right permissions. Um, CoreView is just one tool set that I, I think is nice for the reason um, and for what you want to do. Um, yes, there are others out there, but this is what you need in your company that's running a hybrid or a cloud environment at this point. Absolutely. Uh, honestly, it's one of the things that keeps me you know, excited to come to work at CoreView actually is because the IT teams who adopt it tell us like we could not, we could not do our jobs without this. Um, and that to me, yeah. making people's lives better is really exciting, right? Um, all right. Well, I actually think that's all of the questions I had, but but I do want to mention uh, Dean will be back with us next week on a actually a, a deeper dive into sort of advanced delegation models, how to do tenant administration in 
both really simple and obvious ways we've started to talk about by maybe department or by region and then kind of how you can up level that as well um, with some of these delegated administration tools we've been talking about um, that will be hosted by Roy Martinez, who's our evangelist here. Um, there will be a link in the follow up email that gets sent out. We'll also be sending out an email um, with a link to the recording from today's slides. And then let me go while we're uh, while we're touching base on this here. Let me go see if there are any questions in the queue here, Ian, for you. Um, what was the Oh, this is a good one, actually. Thank you. Um, what was the biggest problem you ran into in rolling out a delegated administration model at the pharmaceutical company you were talking about, I assume? Um, let's think. The biggest problem was that the business didn't have the, how can I put it, the departmentalized of their accounts. That was the biggest issue. And I think the thing that helped us to get it all sorted, to know who can manage who, was using attributes and using something different that um, that your normal native tools cannot do. Um, so if your I you can even use this to manage a environment that's not like super tidy. Okay, it's been tidied up after a while now, but um, that was the biggest problem is how to split the, um, we call it virtual tenants in four view, how to split it up and being able to manage it. Uh, one of the pre biggest problems um, that one of our clients also had was if they have two tenants, how do they manage that? Um, they don't want separate accounts. You can set up two different Office 365 and Microsoft tenants in one um, core view portal. You can just click drop down, select the other tenant, and you can manage it with your same account. Um, and that, and the nice thing is the auditing is very, very good. You can see exactly who did what to which account when they did it. And yeah, I hope that answers the question on what the biggest problem was. Let's call Absolutely. it the biggest I, challenge. Yeah. Right. The biggest challenge, right? Problem. Um, I, the last one I will uh, round us out with, I think it's a great one. And I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with is where did the budget come from? What what uh, what team or what allocation did were you able to pull budget from for that particular customer? Yes, yeah, so the budget came from having a look at what their needs were, what they have in place at this moment, and have a look what can it replace. Okay. Um, the biggest part that said, listen, we need to do this was the whole permissions model. Um, that was the easiest way to um, get it working because there wasn't anything else that um, the client had that could actually provide that um, permission model like CoreView does. Um, so, but to sell it was the permission model reporting was very, very, very important um, because that's one of the things that they needed. And then as well, how it can save money. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dean, for joining me. Um, looking forward to the next webinar. And uh, thanks, everyone else, for staying on with us a little bit over today. I appreciate it. Um, such good stuff. And we will see you on the next webinar. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.